Hi, my name's Nick Hayes from Digital Yacht. We're a Bristol-based specialist marine electronics manufacturer, and we make a range of AIS products. AIS has probably been the biggest step change in marine navigation since GPS was introduced. AIS, or Automatic Identification System, comes in two flavours, Class A and Class B, and it's important to understand the differences between the two systems. Now let's take a look at a typical Class A transponder. This is actually manufactured by our sister company, Digital Deep Sea. They make products for the commercial market, including naval, fishing, workboat and defence. And a Class A transponder is now a mandatory fit on any vessel over 300 tonnes and any passenger carrying vessel that carries more than 12 passengers. Let's look at some of the differences between Class A type devices and Class B. The main difference is that with a Class A device you have a screen. You also have an operating control which allows you to enter data into the unit and you'll see there's extra keys here for entering data. So with a Class A transmission you can actually see where the vessel is heading or intending to head. With a Class B device the, only the static data, the name, the call sign, the MMSI number and so on is available. The other big difference between Class A and Class B is that a Class A unit outputs at 12 watt power on VHF whereas on a Class B device it's only 2 watts. So the range may be significantly higher on a Class A type device. The other difference is that when the unit is transmitting it varies its transmission speed depending on, upon the speed of the vessel. So with a Class A device the faster you go the faster the output of data. In fact with a Class A device uh, it may output data every 2 to 3 seconds whereas with a Class B device it's limited to just once every 30 seconds. So you'll see that with a Class B device there's no display. Instead you've got connections that go directly to your chart plotter or to a PC. You'll also see that there's two antenna connections, one for the GPS and one for the VHF. Most chart plotters when interfaced with a system will now calculate two important parameters for you. The first is called CPA or closest point of approach. The second is called TCPA or time to closest point of approach. Essentially what it allows you to do is to click on a target and see how close it will come to you and also how long until that target gets to you. Now with a Class A based system that calculation is automatic and it will alarm if there's a potential collision situation about to occur. With a Class B device it relies on you using your chart plotter to establish that information but you'll be able to graphically see all the targets are around you and the direction in which they're travelling. Now one myth that exists in the system is that Class A users can turn off the transmissions from Class B users. That's not true. On these devices both Class A and Class B information is picked up and it can't be switched off. It's also worth pointing out that Class A devices also have a pilot plug fitted. This allows any pilot to come onto the vessel and plug in their equipment to gather data on the AIS system. This is a universal connector fitted to all Class A devices so any vessel with a Class A AIS can connect up to a pilot system. So lots of boat owners ask us what's best, radar or AIS? Well they're different systems and obviously in an ideal world it would be nice to have both but let's look at the advantages of either system. With AIS you get to identify targets but of course you only see boats that are equipped with an AIS transponder. You won't see piers, jetties, that type of thing, rocks and maybe other vessels, smaller vessels that aren't equipped with AIS. Whereas with a radar there's a good chance that you could pick those up. The other nice thing about AIS is that it will see round corners which is a great advantage if you're involved in any estuary or river based navigation. And thirdly AIS is much cheaper to install. Typically a transponder costs around £500, a receiver under £200, whereas a radar is going to be several thousand pounds and a lot of extra effort to install on the average leisure boat. Radar of course sees through fog and can see any obstruction that's in front of you and doesn't rely on the vessel having an AIS transponder. However given the calculation capabilities of an AIS in terms of closest point of approach and time to closest point of approach AIS is arguably a much better solution for avoiding collisions with commercial vessels. And don't forget that all commercial vessels over 300 tonnes are mandated to have an AIS transponder. It really is a system that every boat should have and at these affordable prices now for a Class B or for a mandated Class A it makes sense to get your vessel equipped with AIS.